Hey everybody, it's Lon Sybin. We've got another unboxing. This is the Pepper Jobs mini PC called the GLK UC2X. Now we look at a lot of mini PCs here on the channel. Uh, what's interesting is the approach they are taking with this one insofar as performance consistency is concerned. And we'll be exploring that uh, on my main channel with a full review we'll have up pretty shortly actually. So stay tuned for that. Now this did come in free of charge from Pepper Jobs. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor is anyone reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it is uploaded. Uh, so let's open up the box here and see what it looks like. I don't have a price on this one in the U.S. yet. It looks like it's selling for 299 euros uh, outside the U.S. I would expect it to be around the $300 price tag, give or take. Uh, we got an HDMI cable here in the box. We have a quick setup guide here. Now what's unique about this mini PC is that they are designing it to be more consistent in its performance. So they have um, what they say a better cooling system than some of the other mini PCs out there. And as a result, they will not have this thing underclock itself. They basically turned off underclocking because they have confidence in their, uh, their cooling system. So you shouldn't see the throttling that you might see on similar mini PCs. This is not fanless. I do believe there is a fan built into this one. I will take it apart in a minute to see what kind of upgradability you have. Uh, so that is its key differentiator. So we should see slightly better performance here. Uh, the other interesting thing is that it has the ability to drive three 4K displays at 60 Hertz, which we will put to the test and see if it can do that. Uh, you can do that through the HDMI, the display port, and then running with a uh, USB type C adapter. Now, the other thing that's interesting is that you can power this through USB-C power delivery. So it's completely possible to plug this into a monitor that supports power delivery and have the whole thing uh, boot up and essentially work without using any other cables. I thought that was kind of cool. Uh, lots of ports on this one. So we have a reset switch here, Kensington lock over there. Uh, if you want to just plug in the AC adapter, you can through the DC input. But again, you can use the USB-C port, they say. Uh, we've got gigabit Ethernet here, display port out, HDMI out, which we covered already, uh, that USB-C port, headphone microphone jack there, another USB-C port. Uh, one of these is power delivery, the other one is not, so this one with the little battery, I believe, will do the power delivery. Uh, this one will do, I believe, display and data. You have two USB 3.0 ports here and a micro SD card slot. Now this one came configured, if we look on the box here, uh, with an N4100 processor, that's a new Gemini Lake chip. Uh, it's got the Intel Graphics 600. It's got four gigs of RAM pre-installed, but you can uh, bring it up to eight gigs max in a uh, dual channel configuration. I believe it's single channel by default. Uh, we've got a built-in storage, but it doesn't say how much, so I'll have to look and see what we've got there. And there's also an M2 slot here on the bottom. Uh, this will support an M2 SATA drive but it will not support an M2 NVMe drive. So just bear that in mind if you're looking at buying this thing, get the right drive, uh, M2 SATA only on it. So let's take it apart real quick and see uh, what is inside and what kind of ports we can get at. All right, so here is the memory and storage options for you. What's nice is that they have these panels over uh, those sections, so they're very easy to get at for very quick upgradability. It only, though, comes with one stick of RAM, which means that by default, you're not getting the full potential out of this, especially for games and graphics. Uh, that's one thing we found in the past that these Gemini Lake chips love dual channel memory and perform better with it. Uh, so I would suggest getting a second four gig stick, bring it up to eight, and you'll see not only the benefit of added memory, but also greater performance by putting in that second channel of RAM. Now, right here is the wireless card for Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. And then on top of it, you'll install your uh, M2 SATA drive. Remember, it doesn't support NVMe, uh, just SATA, and that will, will install over the top of the other card here. And the antennas are uh, in the case, so you're not going to see any real interference with that. All right, let's dig a little further here and see what else we can find inside. Okay, so we got the rest of the case taken off, only four screws that secure everything together. And you can see here the back of the motherboard. We're going to flip it around now to see what the front looks like. And you can see that copper heat sink that they're saying is the key to the performance gains with this one. Uh, that, of course, is over the top of the N4100 processor. The processor is not upgradable, of course, but you can see 
uh, what they're doing here to try to maximize the cooling so that they don't have it underclocked. So they've basically turned off the processors underclocking so it won't uh, dial itself down. And they say the heat sink here is key to all of that. A nice big copper heat sink on there along with a fan. And of course, we'll comment on the fan noise when we get this thing booted up for the full review. Uh, so that is the inside of this, pretty easy to get at. And of course, the things that you want to get at are going to just be underneath the uh, outer shell here, which I thought was very nice, especially given that uh, if you're like me, you like to work on your little mini PCs every once in a while. Well, let's see what else is in the box before we wrap up this unboxing. And remember, we'll have a full review soon on the main channel. Uh, so let's look at what else is here. So we've got the power adapter here. And what you've got also with it are some adapters depending on the uh, area of the world that you're in. So it looks like it should work no matter where you are uh, with the included adapters here. They're in here, you've seen those before, uh, and that is pretty much it. But again, I think I'm gonna power mine uh, just with USB-C power delivery. So what I'm gonna do now is put this back together. I am going to fill out those RAM slots there. I also have an M2 SATA drive I'm gonna stick in here too. We'll figure out exactly how much eMMC storage it has on board as well and we will take it from there. Now, I am not sure if this comes with a Windows license. I think it might because I did see, yep, yeah, I did see the Windows 10 sticker on here. Uh, so I'm guessing you probably get a Windows 10 home license. That's kind of par for the course these days. Uh, so I think we should be in good shape. I uh, will also check and see though, if it can run Linux, which I would expect it to, given that we've seen uh, pretty good performance out of these on uh, Linux lately, Ubuntu in particular. So a lot more to come on this, stay tuned and you can follow along on my main channel at lon.tv. This channel is brought to you by the lon.tv supporters, including gold level supporters, Chris Allegretta, the four guys with quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.